If you were a child in the 90s and your family had a PC, there's a good chance you played your fair share of edutainment games. These were educational games that were designed to be entertaining for young audience, and developers that produced these included The Learning Company, Broadabund, and even Microsoft. These ranged from focusing on a specific character, to being based on a well-known property, to basic encyclopedias. And I'm going to reminisce about the ones I remember playing in my childhood. I guess I should start with the most famous and beloved of all edutainment game series, none other than Carmen Sandiego. Even though the famous globetrotting character was introduced in the 80s, I'm more familiar with her games from the 90s. Where in the world is Carmen Sandiego was highly addictive with its premise of collecting clues and trying to locate Carmen and her henchmen. With its impressive graphics and clever way of teaching geography, I found myself returning to this game again and again as I progressed through with each mystery. And there was something enormously satisfying when I finally caught up with Carmen Sandiego. The designers at Broadabund were also very smart and that when the games took on a different subject, they also switched up the format. Where in time is Carmen Sandiego was another game I loved. In this one, each level is a different time period, and you would be stuck until you corrected the timeline and reversed Carmen's actions. Because of the extended period you would spend on each case, it was effective in teaching you about the time period and historical figures, whether it was ancient Egypt or Marco Polo visiting China. There was also Carmen Sandiego Word Detective and Carmen Sandiego Math Detective, which taught grammar and mathematics respectfully. These were less clue-based and more based on simple problem solving, but they nonetheless did their job and were good games in their own right. Microsoft, meanwhile, partnered with Scholastic to make a series of games based on the Magic School Bus. Even though multiple games were produced, the ones I remember playing were the ones about the solar system, the human body, and the rainforest. These games cleverly incorporate the stories from the television series and books, and encourage players to explore. The Magic School Bus explores the solar system, takes you to each planet, and even a few moons, and the designers did an exceptional job of portraying them. The writers also included plenty of humor that added to the enjoyment of these games. Disney also got into the edutainment field. Math Quest with Aladdin was one I played quite a bit, in which Aladdin and Jasmine are kidnapped by an evil genie, and the objective is to solve a bunch of mathematics problems in order to save them. The educational components were well integrated into the storyline, and Robin Williams even voiced the genie. You could argue the Walt Disney World Explorer was more of an advertisement for the theme parks, and yes, it was. However, it still included a lot of facts and information about the history of the parks, and how the Imagineers created the rides, including plenty of archival photos and clips. A company whose edutainment games I was definitely familiar with was, appropriately named, the Learning Company. Most people, when they hear that, probably think of Reader Rabbit, which was a word game, and I can confirm I did play Reader Rabbit too. On the same CD-ROM, I had the Ultimate Writing and Creativity Center, which you learned how to write stories. I probably wrote a bunch of silly and childhood stories on there, none of which I can recall. There was also Operation Neptune, in which you controlled a submarine and solved mathematics problems. That was one I definitely played a lot, and it was certainly an ingenious combination of underwater exploration and numbers. The Learning Company produced the Super Solver series, and the game I remember is Gizmos and Gadgets. You went through warehouses picking up items to build a vehicle to race against an evil genius. As you did this, the game had you solve different sorts of puzzles related to science, and it was a fun one. Then there was the Clue Finder series, about a group of mystery-solving teenagers who travel around the world. The one I have the most familiarity with is Mystery in the Himalayas. You went around a village and played mathematics-related puzzles and games in order to find all the clues. Another company of its own fair share of well-known edutainment games was Mech, most famous for distributing the immortal classic, The Oregon Trail. The game in the series I played the most was Oregon Trail 2, which did attempt to update the graphics and allow you more freedom to move around. Even though it's not necessarily an edutainment game in the traditional sense, it still gave you an idea of what life might have been like to travel through the United States in the mid-19th century. Mech also produced the Muncher series, where you controlled a monster hopping around a board and eating numbers. The version I'm familiar with is Math Muncher's Deluxe, which had a very creative aesthetic and even interrupted the gameplay with funny television advertisements. It was certainly adorable looking back at it. A less known game developer was Seventh Level, which seemed to specialize in edutainment games with more cartoon-inspired concepts and designs. 
One was the universe according to virtual reality, a science game in which Charles Fleischer voices an Einstein-like scientist. Yes, the voice of Roger Rabbit. And you know what? I actually did learn a decent amount about science from playing this game. Virtual reality also included a lot of catchy songs that I'm amazed I still remember to this day. Seventh Level was also responsible for the Toonland games. Howie Mandel voiced a bear who goes around his farm and performs a number of songs of his friends. This was followed by more educational games, Little Howie's Great Word Adventure being the one I know. You have the expected word games, but the most impressive element is the animation, which gives the characters plenty of bounce and humorous expressions. Meanwhile, Davidson was responsible for Math Blaster. There have been a number of iterations, and the one I played was Math Blaster 2, Secret of the Lost City, and I loved it. The story was creative, the sound effects were delightful, and the levels were enormous fun to play. My favorite was when you combine different parts to make aliens, and all incorporating math problems to solve. Other educational CD-ROMs I played were more akin to encyclopedias. Dorling Kindersley produced a series of CD-ROMs under the Eyewitness Manor, in which you walked through a museum and visited the various exhibits. The developers designed these in a way that actually made it really enjoyable to explore this virtual museum. And of course, it started with that amazing opening sequence and unforgettable theme song. Microsoft also teamed up with DK for that Microsoft Home series of interactive encyclopedias. The ones I probably enjoyed the most from the series were Microsoft Musical Instruments and Microsoft Dinosaurs, a lot of which incorporated footage from Phil Tippett's 1985 animated television special about those prehistoric beasts. I guess some of you are probably wondering if I ever played the humongous entertainment games, which I'm aware were big parts of a lot of people's childhoods. While the likes of Pajama Sam and Freddy Fish look familiar to me, I don't think I ever played those games curiously enough. And I would probably remember if I did. When I was watching these clips from all the CD-ROMs mentioned in this video, I found it quite remarkable how much memory I retained of them. I have not played these in over 20 years, and yet all the images and music and sound effects have managed to stick with me. It probably says something about how important these edutainment games were for my growing development and how I kept coming back to them. And that's a massive credit to the designers and developers who helped bring the games to life, as they were able to be entertaining even when teaching me things. Now I'm curious if any of the games or series I mentioned also took you down memory lane. Let me know in the comments, and I'll see you next time.